Hey YouTubers, Skull and Jagger here. Today, um, I'm going to go through a parts list for my new rig. Um, I figured I'll show you guys um, my new build. Um, but before that, um, if you go back, I think two videos ago, um, I showed you my current setup, um, which I just gave to my son. And that consisted of a Ryzen 2700X, um, 16 gigabyte of G Skill Trident Z, and a Vega 64, and um, a Rogue, um, I'll just say ROG Crosshair uh, X470 chipset motherboard. And I, I want to say it's Crosshair 7. Um, so I gave that all to him. He's 10 years old, almost 11. I know that's total overkill, but. He'll be gaming for a very long time. He's also using a 1080p, 144 hertz Dell gaming monitor that I bought um, for him. So he'll be able to game for a very long time. He's 27 inches. And I think, you know, that's a nice build for him to, to last quite a bit. It's overkill, but I think I don't have to worry about upgrading his comp components anytime soon. But that allows way for me to upgrade my setup so I just figured I'd just create a video today to kind of show you what that uh, parts list look like. I'm getting everything off Newegg, at least the core computer uh, components off Newegg and then some small other things from Amazon. So let's just get into it. Um, let me log in here. So as you can see, um, looking at the, uh, to get the Asus ROG Crosshair 8 Eero X570 board. Uh, this is a lovely board, man. Uh, Asus makes awesome, awesome boards. Um, aesthetically, it looks amazing. It keeps that black theme going. Um, love the RBG on it. It's just placed in the right place. Um, but my main thing for getting Asus board is not just the reliability um, you know, everything works all right out of the box, but I'm a water cooling enthusiast. What that means for those who are not familiar with the term is people like to water cool or like to basically play with their, their water cooling stuff and just want to have every little detail when they're water cooling. And so for me, uh, this board hits a nail on his head. This is something I don't see any other manufacturer doing. This is the ROG water cooling zone. It was on my X470 and now it's on the X570 and they brought it back. It's only, it seems like it's only on the Eero and the Crosshair Eero 8. Um, I think the Wi-Fi edition, but it's only, I've only ever seen this on Asus motherboards. And basically it comes with a zone that houses a, a I have put water pump header. So that means if your pump use more amps, than normal fan header can give if it's able to power that pump and give it enough power to spin up it also houses um as you can see here a water flow tachometer so you know for those who want to see how much water is flowing through the loop per minute in terms of liters per minute or gallons per minute or per hour this this is what this is for so those are for the it's a small niche but i like it i like to be able to see while i'm gaming you know, how my water flow is going to make sure the pump is also working at the same time. And um, it's pretty cool. It's, like I said, it's a minor niche, but it's a cool detail to have. Um, the, these two things above it here are the water uh, sensors. So it tells you the temperature sensor of the water um, in and out, which is pretty cool. It's a small niche, but I think that's what makes this board stands out for me. Um, for those who want a water cool, that'd be a cool feature. Like again, a cool feature to have. If you use uh, hardware info, this will show up in hardware info and you can put that um, the, the static display on your screen, just like when you're viewing the GPU temperature and stuff like that. You can actually have it displayed through River Tuner, and that can display on your screen while you're gaming. Of course, it's distracting, but if you make it small enough, it's, it's a cool little uh, thing to look at. Um, yeah, so that's the reason I'm going with this board. I like the color. It's black, a uh, little bit of silver accent to it, but it looks pretty solid for what you're getting. And let's move on to the next thing here. 
I'm gonna grab I don't care what brand as long as it's stock now let's talk on this I know a lot of people give uh, stock cards flack I mean they literally ramp on these cards this there's a market for this for me personally I want to cool all my cards and so I have to get a reference card um, aftermarket cards come with custom PCB custom stuff so you cannot expect like uh, water block makers like EK, you know, um, how Alpha Cool and those people who make water blocks to make water block for every single uh, design that is not referenced. So for me, I have to buy a reference card. So I know people hate on them, but for me, I, I definitely need a reference card in order to, to water cool my card. So yeah, I don't want him to go out of style so quickly where I cannot get one or find one. I know AMD has announced that they're that they're going to sell them on their website, so that's a good thing. Even if I can't buy it off Newegg, I'll still be able to get it on AMD's website. But still, a lot of people give give blower style cooler flack. Do they are they hot? Are they loud? Yes. Honestly, if you turn up the fan and put the fan at full tilt, the temperature will come down. It's just a lot of people these days are overly sensitive about noise. And honestly, man, back in the day when I started gaming back in 2009, nobody gives two shits about fan noise. Nobody cares. They had deltas. They had fans just blaring and gaming and you had your headset on. So you wouldn't even hear the fan noise over your headset, right? So, but these days, gamers are so overly sensitive about this stuff. It's ridiculous. If you ask me, I mean, it's just my opinion. If if I had no choice to water cool and I just run air setup, honestly, I buy two of them, two of these cards or one of these cards, have the fan on full tint while I'm gaming, no cares in the world. But, you know, again, people are just so sensitive these days about every little thing and nitpicking that, you know, it's not a bad card. I think it's a great card stock per personally, but for those who want to run quieter and cooler, this is definitely not the card for you. If you want to run quiet and cooler, I'll say definitely wait for the aftermarket cards. I think that's been launching this week. There's a couple of them already, so get that card. But for me, this is definitely what I'm going to get. A reference card so I can throw a water block on it and overclock the crap out of it. So yes, I'm going to go with the, 50, um, the RX 5700 XT. Now, the reason why I'm not looking at the alternative, which would be the NVIDIA RTX 2060 Super and the RTX 2070 Super is because of one thing. I've never been a fan of NVIDIA's graphics card. And it's not because I'm hating on them. It's just I don't. I've had two GTX 570 back in 2011. If you go back to my channel videos, you'll probably see how long I've been building computers for. I've been doing it for a while. And... Those cards to me were horrible in terms of temperature. They were horrible in terms of gameplay. They were horrible. They kept on crashing. The drivers were really bad. Just had a terrible experience with NVIDIA graphics cards. So I never cared for them then. And then I could tell going going from a 5870 back then, the HD 5870, to these GTX 570s, the color quality was big difference. The sharpness, the image quality that AMD cards give you versus NVIDIA was a big difference and that was a big turn off for me so from that point on I never bought an Nvidia card and I don't care for their ray tracing it's a gimmick um, DLSS is absolute garbage as you can see it's over blurred the image um, it's it's a lot of gimmick they sell you and the reason why they get a lot of frame rate is because they do massive color compression which is why they the game look washed out and not as sharp and that gives you more frames, but I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm a gamer. I want frames, but I also want sharpness and color quality. And I will never sacrifice those two things just to get frame rates. I mean, AMD cards deliver the same, if not equivalent frame rate, depending on the game you're playing. And especially you if you have a, a high frame rate, uh, high refresh rate monitor, you shouldn't have to worry about you know how much frames you get yeah you know i agree you don't want to dip below 60 but most of these cards are 1440p stay right in the 80s and 90s in most games so honestly i'm satisfied with this card there's no need for me to look at ray tracing until it catches on until the technology really picks up and catch on 
I don't care about it right now. So I just care about the FP32 and 16 performance and these cars deliver at a good, good, very good price. And so that's why I'm sticking with AMD. So that's my reasoning behind that. Now, if you like Nvidia, that's fine. I'm not gonna hate on you on it. I just don't buy scam video cards. Sorry, had to put that out there. Um, so let's move on to the next item in this list. Sorry about ranting. I just, you know, I end up talking about these things. Sometimes they get under my skin. <laughs> so I'm going to buy two of these Western Digital 2 terabyte black hard drives. Um, I think this will be plenty enough for me to store games. Um, you know, I'm going to run this in RAID 0 um, to make up for some of that speed that the SSD would have gave, would have benefited from in games. But Honestly, a two terabyte SSD is way too expensive and I'm not willing to spend that type of money on, you know, um, a two terabyte SSD right now. And plus I wanted two of them instead of one. So I'd rather just go with two regular mechanical hard drive. Um, they're 7200 RPM, 64 megabytes of cache. Once you raid them, you should make up for some of that performance. It won't be as fast as an SSD, but it'll, but it'll be somewhat there, you know, um, better than just running one. So I'm going to run that and that will should store majority of my games. Um, so yeah, this is what I decided on. It's much cheaper. Save some costs there. Um, then I'm going to, then I saw this uh, HP EX920 one terabyte PCIe 3.0 NVMe drive. Um, I'm going to run this uh, as my boot up drive. And not just as my boot drive, but uh, if, you know, if there's one or two games that I want to put on there, I might just uh, put the one or two games that I will play at that moment. So at least my favorite games I'll put on here. But for the most part, most of my games will go on those uh, that, uh, two terabyte hard drive in RAID. Yep, so that's it for storage. And last but not least, the Ryzen 3800X. Now I know a lot of people are saying, you know, save some money and get the the Ryzen 3700X, but here's the deal. I rather take the chance with this only because I've seen people pushing these to 4.4 gigahertz um, and 4.5 gigahertz if you're lucky. See, now I'm running a water cool setup, a full loop, so I'm gonna be pushing this. I don't mind pushing 1.4 volts through this sucker. If it's gonna net me 4.5 to 4.4 gigahertz at 1.4 volts, whew, I'll be super happy. So I rather run my chance with this because, like I said, I'm, 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 I'm the whole point of building this water cooling loop is to try to push um, these parts as far as I can push them. And so, in, in order to achieve that, I'll definitely be um, buying the, the products that are meant to be overclocked. Now, I know, honestly, the 3000 series Ryzen, they have uh, PBO. Um, that allows them to boost and overclock themselves practically max out the box um, But I think there's some headroom there for people who like to tweak and I like to tweak stuff um, So if I can push this closer to its limit with some good DDR4 RAM uh, I think I'll be happy and good enough for gaming. I'll be playing. I'll be gaming at um, 1440p uh, 2k at 144 Hertz with a free sync So I'm not worried about anything in terms of a smooth gameplay. I think this is a good build for me, and so once the parts comes in, I'll definitely do an unboxing of that and show you guys. Um, right now, I'm indecided what I want to try these RAM. They're 3600 megahertz. Um, they look like some Chinese company. Um, I've seen a couple of these already. People like them. I'm not sure if I want to chance it. It's not a bad price for 16 gigabytes of 3600. Um, the timings are a little bit on the loose side. I'm pretty sure you can tighten that up. Um, but who knows? I might I might try it. It looks like it's running Samsung B dies um, here. So who knows? Um, I might buy it. But right now I have some uh, super loose memory. I'll show you that here. I got some super loose memory here. Somewhere. There you go. So I bought these super loose memory. They're out of stock. Um, from Geel, so and they're you know they're made for the AMD AMD edition, so these should overclock really nicely. These are using I tested it and it's using the Samsung B dies, so I should be able to get some tight timings out of it and try to push it a little further with um 
with some uh, tweaking and overclocking. So I'm definitely looking forward to the setup. Um, I'm so excited about this. Um, you know, again, if you guys like this type of content, let me know. You know, leave a comment down in um, down in the comment section. I'll answer you if you guys have any questions. Just remember to like and subscribe, share the video as well. And uh, again, once I get these orders in, I'll do a, a big unboxing and I'll also do a, like a, a, a setup of the rig. You know, before when I usually build my computers, I wouldn't show anything. <laughs> but this time, I think I want to record and show you the build process of my idea of, of doing all of this. So, yeah, guys, um, let me know what you think of this build. Um, again, like, like, comment, subscribe, and thank you for watching, guys.